Welcome to your inspirational astrology horoscope for Monday and Tuesday, April 14th and 15th, 2014. I am astrologer David Palmer, the Leo King, here to illuminate the collective consciousness. Woo! Here we are, the big eclipse, and I thought I'd give it to you in two days because literally this eclipse is going to happen late Monday night into Tuesday morning. So guess what? I definitely thought I'd drop it all in a two-day horoscope. And before I get to the horoscope, I am giving away a free reading and a free ticket to my Jupiter in Leo retreat. The link is down below to check out more about the retreat, and the link is below to sign up with your email, which I will be picking out for the drawing. And I am thinking about doing the drawing at the end of this week. So make sure you register down below. Here we are, a big lunar eclipse to start things off. Now, before I go into all this information, because there is a lot, I want to kind of go backwards. March 1st. March 1st was a time when all these planets did crazy things. We had the Mars go retrograde. We had all this energy with Jupiter. We had the new moon. We had so much signaling. And that started a portal. And it's been a portal of change, a portal of understanding our karmic roads, but more importantly, a portal of this higher ascension to this new age of life. And it is closing at the end of July. So we're still in the middle of this portal. There's a lot brewing. And in my opinion, the, the crescendo is starting to come here. This is when everything is starting to happen. If you look at an astrology chart right now, not only are we in eclipse season, which I've described as the most karmic energy of fate train, baby, whoop, whoop, times in our life, but we have a huge cardinal cross going on. There's all the planets not getting along, or they are having to get along. That's the way I like to look at it. The same way in a song, the guitarist has to get along with the singer and the piano has to go along with the guitars and the drummer. And when the song starts to peak, guess what? They're all working together. They're all going together. But trust me, if you're ever in music, it is the hardest thing to do. Get everybody clacking at the same time and get it all peaked and to have this powerful message and the hair stand up goosebumps in your life. That's what these moments are right now. The song is peaked. The energy is intense. Especially, we have got Pluto on Monday, right before the eclipse, the most powerful planet of transformation and change going retrograde. So this signs off, literally from God, of extreme change. Because Pluto has been spending the last six months moving forward, uncovering destiny, showing so much, and Pluto going retrograde is about to receive that change. And this is destiny. These are karmic roads, destinations, because in my opinion, Capricorn is a destination sign, the destination of your purpose in this life. And to have Pluto come here is a signal that right before this eclipse, it is wanting to light up and change and uncover destiny. And I'm sure it's been uncovered to you. The last six months have, have uncovered so much of the roads that you must take in your life, and now it starts to receive this energy. And in the middle of a Mars retrograde right now, which is our action, our strength, the directions to take our life, Mars is in having to go backwards as it's replotting what to take over because Mars is a warrior. And it is time for us to retake in and retreat so much of our energy to really conquer more in our life. This is us getting our, our strength back too. And I think it's so interesting that this is in the middle of it all. Mars is going to go direct in May, near the end of May, on May 20th, and all this energy that's happening right now, the eclipses, all these cardinal crosses, and especially because the cardinal cross has Mars highlighted, it's, it's juicing up action. It's juicing up direction. It's juicing up identification of self. Mars also rules the identity of who you are. And these times are all about destiny, identification of self, the roads to take, but more importantly, relationships. Because we do have Mars in Libra. We do have this big lunar eclipse with the moon in Libra. And more importantly, we've got a north node in Libra. And that's why we're having eclipses. Because these invisible knots in space, these calculations, these ecliptic crossings are why we have these huge eclipses and why we can see them. And the ancients knew that these were times to pay attention to because literally you can look up and go, holy cow. Like it is, it's like God's way of talking. 
And when you have the full moon, this is the energy of the most increased. And that is the volume knob that God's throwing on the radio loud. Trust me, the song's clacking and everything and God's saying, shut up, turn it on. Turn off that crazy Gemini in the corner talking over my song. You know, like literally it's like, Wah! and we have to look at this because it's awakening us to who we really are, what we must connect with, what we must take action with, what the destined roads are in our life that we must take. And when you look at all this, it's intense. It's intense. I mean, coming into this Monday night, we have Mercury going to hump on top of Uranus. It's going to square all everything and oppose everything in this cardinal cross. If you see this, I mean, literally, Mercury on Uranus is excitement, change. It is the nervous system. It is us going, wah! It is increase. It's epiphanies like a mother. Trust me. This is like, holy cow. And it's square in Jupiter, the biggest planet. But more importantly, Mercury and Jupiter have always been at odds, right? Mercury sees things in facts. Jupiter sees things so big and so wide. And to have these two square off mean this is about perceptions. This is about how your mind, your pea little mind needs to awaken, see the power of identification, and make sure that it doesn't forget about opening up to all angles and looking at all the emotions. One thing about Jupiter is it's in Cancer and it's exalted here. That means it does wonderful. And Jupiter's about growing our emotions right now. It's testing these new waters, literally. And here's Mercury having to see all the options. One thing about a Mercury square Jupiter, especially in a client, is the person doesn't see too many options. They only usually see one road and it's definitely not big enough. And this is a test to see if you're seeing how big this road is. I'm sure the universe has put in front of you all these pressures and all this stuff, but I bet you it's great. And I think that you have to see that there are roads that it's trying to take you towards that are big, that are beautiful, that are expansive. It's whether or not your little pea little brain is gonna see that or not, and you have control of that by seeing the truth, by awakening it, by having the epiphany, by trying something new. Mercury must look at things newly as it's on Uranus. And this is crazy energy. You must not be afraid of crazy energy because Uranus is the center point of the big cardinal cross, in my opinion, because where it's positioned, Pluto's starting to square it, and it's about change that you can't be afraid of crazy, weird, wild energy. This is a time that the universe is shaking up the anthill, literally, and you gotta kinda go with it, you know? You kinda be like, okay, yeah, let's just go over here and find a new little thing. You can't be holding on to everything like, no, I don't wanna move. You got to, you've got to expand now. This is growing pains in a chart. I remember I'd cry, I'd call my mom, oh my gosh, my legs hurt! You know, and it was just like, it's part of growing up. That the universe is ready to stretch this reality, to become new. And it's about your inner peace, that it's gonna be courage and definition and taking new actions that you've never taken before in your life. Ones that are definitely building up ones that I definitely think will build up very intensely at the end of May. So even if you don't think like, I can't take the action right now, I can't do that to this person, or I can't do this to my life, or I can't do this in any of my situations, uh, I guarantee you that it's still gonna keep boiling. And this is showing that the boiling's happening. That doesn't mean everything's cooked yet. This is the boiling point. Now. There's not going to be too long before we are pulling ourselves out of the hot tub and being like, oh my God, okay, I'm, I'm cooked. The universe has done everything it can for me. And that's what this is, is that moment starting. This is the start of the eclipses. The next two weeks, fate train alert is on harder than ever because this full moon is going to lead into another solar eclipse, which is a new moon. And this is like the next two weeks and this is the start and if I showed you at the beginning this larger portal that is on top of everything, I mean, it's kind of like the egg and the egg and the egg and the egg, you know? It's like we're in one of the eggs where all the chocolate sauce is, you know, and, and all the inner core. And this is working it all out. It's flexing your feelings. It's flexing your harmony, too. It's flexing action. It's flexing courage. It's flexing perception. Venus exalted in Pisces right now, doing wonderful, just came off Neptune. It is unveiled, the relationships, what you must manifest. You are consciously aware or completely blind 
to what you must manifest, what relationships are right in front of you. The universe has unveiled this. And the only real nice alignment I see is Venus trining Jupiter, that we must see the values, we must see the roads of relationships that are in front of us. We must see a big picture. We must see perception. Perception is everything in this transit now. It's gonna be whether or not you let your brain rule everything and your calculator and that little nerd inside of you thinks that it knows it all well i'm telling you it doesn't because mercury is highly 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 screwed up in the middle of this cardinal cross it's in the middle of the cardinal cross so this shows our little brains must be stretched and you must see bigger and one thing about a mercury in aries is it thinks it knows it all right mercury in aries is like i know exactly what to do i know where i'm gonna go i'm the leader let me sit in the front seat well, where in you are you just thinking, no, 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 and denying the truth? Saturn is in Scorpio. Where it's going to unveil nasty crap, truthful stuff. And one thing about Scorpio is, you know what? You can either be afraid of dirty. <laughs> this might sound dirty, but it is kind of dirty. There are people who are afraid of dirty when it comes to sex. There are people that are so afraid, like, I can't get naughty. I can't get dirty. I can't wear that lingerie. I can't get, like, I can't talk dirty. I can't put my finger there, like, <laughs> you know, literally. And this is showing in your life, are you afraid of getting dirty? Are you afraid of the truth? Are you afraid of seeing right through the veil that it's right in front of you? Like, it's those that step into this that get the orgasm. It's those that step into this that get the connection. Because Saturn in Scorpio is rough work. It is not easy because the only way to achieve your road, your truth in your life is you must step into the truth. You must step into the connection. You must step into the, the deeper emotional needs. And they're right in front of you. And you might think you know how to control everything right now, by probably avoiding that truth. And you can't do that anymore. Your brain can't think it knows how to maybe come in all these directions and go in the way that it wants to go to avoid that truth. <sighs> Sorry. Why don't you see that the universe has all the roads open for you? All you must do is follow the path, see the signs, but more importantly, connect your identification with the right partnerships now. If you're in a business and, and you're you know, selling C's candy and the, your business partner doesn't even like C's candy, what are you doing? If they're sitting there trying to sell soap on the computer, energetically, you guys are gonna have horrible sales. Energetically, the office is gonna suck. And I bet you more than ever, you know what? You're probably not gonna go anywhere. Same thing is in love, you know? I mean, love we've talked about in the past can only work if true emotional deep connections there. If you're rolling over at night and trying to avoid it, oh pfft, I don't think there's gonna be that much happiness. And we are at these points because I wanna finish this horoscope with relationships. It's a full moon lunar eclipse in Libra. It's a north node in Libra. It's a Mars retrograde in Libra. And it's a Venus exalted in Pisces, just came off Neptune, showing that there is destiny, there is fate. It's already been shown up at your door. This is a Pluto retrograde. It is intense, and I guarantee you come into Monday and you feel like, what is this? It's whether or not you are gonna step into that truth, whether or not you're gonna see that you owe yourself peace in your life, but it's gonna take you going to take the action, to identifying correctly. It's not as difficult as you see. It's just about how you identify in your life. I'm gonna use one last example and then I gotta go. But if you identify with, I am successful, I am gonna make it in my life, I'm gonna have the greatest love, I am the greatest person on the planet, I guarantee you the universe will deliver it right to you. Because if you identify with being a loser, you're an effing loser. If you identify with it's gonna to be too hard, you are going down. If you identify with, I can't, I can't, which is a typical Mars and Libra trait, that's what they always say, Mars and Libra, I can't, I can't. You can't. This is a perception change. This is a game changer. This is saying you can't. This is saying I'm identifying with what it's gonna be and not having your doubts, not having the, everything there. The truth is in front of you. But you know what? Saturn and Scorpio is rough work. I know, I was born with it. But that also gives me a little bit of strength here when Saturn is in Scorpio because I know where the work is and I just put my whole life and I dedicate 100% to it. And Saturn and Scorpio asks for a 100% dedication and it's a little dirty. You know, the only way to get the best orgasm, and I guarantee you, in Tantra or anything, is you gotta dedicate 100% of the energy in there. You can't give 98%.
So where are you about to give 100%? Where are you saying you can't? Where are you saying you can? Where are you identifying correctly? And who in your life is not reflecting you exactly? How are you gonna change the world if you're a Power Ranger and you've got Minnie Mouse on the team? I'm sorry. Pow, pow, Power Rangers, you know, we have different colors and we are flying and we're gonna do all this stuff. It's time to identify correctly with who you are, what you connect with, and that goes in relationships and it goes with the relationship with yourself. If you're saying you can or you can't, you are or you aren't, you're winning or you're losing. Aries is a sign of winning. It doesn't take losers. Libra takes losers. You know, it still coddles them in, in, in the energy and this is what makes it a little crazy. Is in order to win, you have to make sure that you win. And it's difficult because you might think that, oh, I've got to let go of this energy and I don't want to be mean or I don't want to do this. You have to step into your truth and you must win by being in your truth. So check out my website, inclusiveastrology.com if you have any questions or if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one reading. Thank you so much for all of your support and I know you'll make it through it and I will see you back on Wednesday. <music>